Sunday, the 24th day of July 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones, back in studio for the live Sunday broadcast. We'll be here for the next two hours. Thank you again so much for joining us. We're going to look back on the incredible events of the RNC. We're going to look forward to the unbelievable events already unfolding at the DNC, where we have crew on the ground. They'll be joining us coming up in the last 15 minutes of this hour. Uh, Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign and Trump confidant, uh, will be joining us coming up in the second hour to cover the waterfront. And obviously I have a lot of other uh, news concerning Camp Trump. And, and, and even some of this stuff I was told, uh, I was like, you know, not from Roger Stone, my, my other Trump source, it's even closer to Trump. You could say you couldn't get closer to Trump than this person. <laughs> I'm not sorry. The point is, is that um, very interesting developments is all I can tell you. And this source told me I could go ahead and talk about it. But you know what? I'm just not going to. So there, there's that said. Also had dinner with Nigel Farage of UKIP, who, by the way, told me he's not resigning completely. He's still going to be in the EU parliament. He's resigning from the head of UKIP to try to give the political class there a chance to, to do the right thing and not make it about his party getting ahead, uh, but actually about the establishment doing the right thing. And that's what I'd heard he was doing as a major olive branch. He told me that point blank at dinner, and I said, is that off record? And he said, absolutely not. He said, I have a bad feeling I'm going to be back very, very soon. Very, very good man, very, very real, very, very concerned about how they're attacking the UK, England right now, trying to keep them inside. Spent uh, about an hour with him. That was amazing. We got a bunch of interviews as well that we haven't even aired yet. What we're seeing unfold right now is so epic that it just makes my head spin. The good that's happening, the bad that's happening as well. This is going to be a very important broadcast. But I tell you, that is a very enjoyable joke that I have a Trump insider that's not Roger Stone. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just funny. It's so ridiculous to watch the dinosaur media falling apart, and they know they're falling apart, and they had a deadness in their eyes. The arrogance has left them. Their aura of invincibility has fallen, and it has been the listeners of this broadcast, Donald Trump, Matt Drudge, uh, and others who have really helped this major breakthrough that I really don't see being reversed. And I'm not an overconfident person, but barring the globalists basically nuking major cities and trying to bring in a, you know, some type of new dark age, which they might do, I, I don't see them long-term winning. Now, for those of us alive right now, that doesn't really say much because it's going to get rough. Stone wants to respond to it. I was talking to CJ. He's a really smart guy. So what do you think of the Young Turks thing? If you haven't heard about it, it's one of the most viral... <clears throat> Stories out there the last few days. I was on Media Row, hundreds and hundreds of media booths. Everyone grabbing me, wanting me to come talk to them. But that wasn't just me they wanted to talk to. It was everybody. It was a free-for-all. Ann Coulter crashed one show I was on. I crashed another. Sink of the Young Turks was crashing shows. I mean, this is what was going on. One of their folks was like, hey, come over here. Be on our show. I'm like, I'll be back later. So then they're just up there on this little stage. And I, and I go, hey, what's going on? He's all nice at first, but then... The guy that I think, I'm pretty sure it's the guy that had divided us up like 20 minutes before. He starts screaming, Alex Jones, Alex Jones is taking over. And then Sink goes crazy. And I don't think he was in on this and just starts screaming and yelling and threatening to physically attack me. And some guy spit in my face. Well, same guy that had, uh, I believe it divided us up. Looks like the same guy, but they all have that fake intellectual, you know, dress to them. And, 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 and CJ said, you know, this is really a diversion from the history that's happening right now. And this, you know, failing, sinking leftist. Pro, you know, pro-Islamic globalist group acting like I needed their show. I mean, it's really just a lesson and a hoax by them. And that YouTube was pulling videos of the confrontation so people couldn't see the actual truth. But later they had to reinstate them under pressure. I'm going to be absolutely completely honest with all the listeners and viewers out there. I have never been in a better mood. I've never been happier. I've never been more excited. I don't care about knowing Hollywood people or even rock stars. Once you've had a chance to do it, it really becomes old hat. Even though some of those folks are really interesting 
informative, passionate, liberty-loving people. I like them because they're patriots, the people I know, not because they're famous. In fact, being famous to a great extent is a gilded cage. And those that have become famous and haven't lost their soul, you notice we're always trying to move to the countryside somewhere to be left alone and, you know, changing their name and getting a uh, facelift or a nose job so no one recognizes them. But I am so proud of my association with Donald Trump and my association with people like Matt Drudge because they are true trailblazers. They're innovators that swam against the current and are trying to basically restore our republic and the true renaissance, the free, open society. And I tell you, to know that Donald Trump is real, to know that Donald Trump is informed, to know that Donald Trump is aware of the world government plan and the plan to make us poor under Cloward and Piven and Agenda 21, and to know that he really does want to restore the republic and really turn loose the engine of human innovation is so exciting. Now, there are two rules about Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. And the second rule is don't talk about Fight Club. And this is definitely uh, the real Fight Club. This is what Fight Club wishes it was, okay? And I'm going to just stop right there. People like General Flynn and all these other patriots, I mean, amazing to be absolutely confirmed what I already knew, that they're dialed in, they get the whole program better than I do, and they are ready to fight it. They think America is ready to wake up and take action against the new world order, and it is just such an exciting time to be alive. I'm going to stop right there. But I'm telling you, we don't have an uphill battle anymore if we just realize that humanity is built to win, humanity is built to innovate and rise. And then for far too long, we've been asleep and let these little pullies, these little tyrants like Debbie Wasserman Schultz and others suppress us and control us because we're not arrogant. We're not seeking power. We're just seeking success and, and kinship and honor. Well, we're not going to have all that unless we get these people out of our way. And so there's not some utopia we're offering on the other side, but it's certainly the opposite of what we're under right now, which is total parasitic despotism. We have a cornucopia of news to cover. But let me just tell you all something from the highest levels of the Pentagon, where there are patriots, from the highest levels of the Trump campaign, and from the highest levels of the resistance in this country. This broadcast is the spirit of the resistance. This broadcast is having the effect. My prayers to God Almighty every day are coming true. And that's what God promises us in the good book is that if we take action and do the right thing and continue to persevere for a long time, in the end, God will take us the rest of the way. And that's happening right now. And even if Trump has the election stolen, even if the globalists set a new off in a major city, they could do anything to bring in tyranny, it's not going to work. Because... By resisting, we win. Even if Trump doesn't get across the finish line, he's moved the ball to the one-yard line. <laughs> and we got a 1,000 downs, folks. If we just take it in our hands, it's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. What's going on? They want to break our will and take our hope. It's not going to work. All right, let me just read to you some of the headlines, and I'm going to come back and cover them. And then we have our crew in Philadelphia covering things. They're going to be popping in. Uh, we're going to have Roger Stone joining us to cover all the new developments and so much more we're able to talk about. J j just as a microcosm, he's having a violent criminal audit all of a sudden. And they're just claiming he didn't pay taxes, period, and is involved in total tax evasion for 2014, even though he has a copy of the check and the filing and the check and the money deposited. And they say, we don't care. We're basically coming to arrest you. That's what Obama's now doing to him. This just started during the RNC last week. He had to run back to New York and deal with it. And he's not scared. He loves it. He understands this is the animating contest of liberty. But the, Nixon had 110 names that he was looking at auditing to mess with, and he got basically 
the beginning of impeachment had to step down over it. And I say, yeah, good. That's bad. So does Stone, who worked for him. But now they just do it in mass and they go, well, that's okay. And that's done to intimidate people. It's an act of desperation. Good. Have a jury trial. Go on there with his check and he paid. And they just, and they said, they just don't care. They just don't care. It's all about just a bunch of arrogant people bullying around. Now, get ready for this. They're at the DNC. They asked the baseball commission why this is going on. They said, no, we changed the printout because they have the sections at the baseball field where they're, where they're having part of the convention. They put a big tent up in Philadelphia. It's on Infowars.com. We're going to write an article about tomorrow. Dim censor white from red, white, and blue to avoid triggering because there was a white section, <laughs> as if anybody would think blue, red, white, as if anybody. So they uh, changed it to a cream, cream section. We're going to play part of that, but the crew is going to be joining us. And if you want to go down that line of censorship, the BBC is now announcing they want to stop using the word terrorist. They don't say Islamic terror already, and now they're going to censor the names. In fact, they've officially done it. This is mainstream news. They're not going to say Ali or Muhammad, even though the latest attacker was called Ali and yelled Allah Akbar. They're going to censor all Islamic names and words from the attacks and then say no ISIS connection. I guess to the big attack killed 80-something people yesterday and then there was 80-something a couple weeks ago and hatchet attacks and nine dead and all this stuff. And it's, just, it's like, wow, you guys really are doubling down with this. But uh, Dems are, have banned uh, the, the white section at the DNC. Munich team government has no ISIS links, the police say. Even though they've been ordered, uh, German ministers are raped. And then they come out and say a blonde-haired German did it. BBC scrubs Ollie from Munich killer's name on TV. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's next level BS. I'm... This is like Hamani Python. It's actually so entertaining if it wasn't so deadly. You know, when your family gets killed. Syrian refugee arrested after killing woman with machete. Reuters uh, in uh, Germany, police say. Just always a Syrian or, you know, Afghan. Of course, there's people that invaded Syria. <laughs> I love they always say with this guy that killed the people at the uh, McDonald's, they said he was a German. Of course, he's from Afghanistan. From Iran. I, I mean, it's just... German machete attack. Shocking footage shows Syrian refugee launched. This is just the last, it's like every few hours now. Launching deadly assault in which pregnant woman is hacked to death. Well, they just call him German. I'm surprised this article even actually got it right. Uh, German officials respond to migrant acts attack by calling for mandatory Islam classes. I told you, you will be indoctrinated so that you don't trigger them. So we're going to not have the white and red, white, and blue because that having white triggers you. And now you're triggering the Muslims wearing a miniskirt. Remember the Cologne mayor, the Greenpeace, you know, Greenie, Green Party lady? She said, don't wear those sexy miniskirts. And they're having to not have open street parties anymore in, during Oktoberfest, which Germans have done for a thousand years. They can't do that now. They have to be walled off and in buildings because it's, it's causing a triggering. You bring in something incompatible to wreck the liberal society. Having guns, low taxes, freedom's liberal. Banning the color white is the opposite. It's cult-level brainwashing. By the way, we have it. There is no doubt we have a guy that is literally the most brainwashed zombie cult member of Hillary ever. And here's what's crazy. We have hundreds of these coming. This is actually what most of them are like. We didn't just go find a loon. We have, it, the, the video's up on Infowars.com, the ultimate Hillary zombie. Today we interviewed in Philadelphia. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I could care less about being famous. I could care less about being successful within the globalist system that they already control. I want to create new systems. I want to see individuals turned loose to empower themselves. I want to see humanity free. The feudalist model of globalism is about making you poor, stupid, and controllable, programmable. What America was all about, even though it never even realized but a tenth of its plans was about setting up a system where the individual could be turned loose to follow their dreams. And that's what Donald Trump's talking about, bringing back hope. And that's why I get excited about it, because we're changing history. We're having a massive effect. And we're bringing back real hope, not the fake hope of Barack Obama. So...
We've got all these articles where people named Ali are having their names censored on the news, so you don't even know it was an Islamicist yelling Allah Akbar, killing people. While well, they're saying it wasn't an Islamic attack that happened in Nice, even though they admit it was. They said San Bernardino wasn't. Fort Hood wasn't. And again, it just shows what these Western governments are doing. And now we've got to have Islamic training in schools to make us accept it so they don't kill us anymore. Meanwhile, Dem censor white from red, white, and blue to avoid triggering color white change because it's racist. InfoWars reporter Joe Biggs discovered that Democrat media party planners excise the white from the red, white and blue sections of the media party in order to not trigger anyone. And don't worry, they've excised, you get the censorship's now so trendy and cool, they've excised the word Ali from a killer or Allah Akbar. Meanwhile, I reported on this in the middle of last week when Roger L stepped down from Fox News as their CEO, that it was a total made up red herring that had organized for years and ready for the election. And that they were bringing it out in the election to basically allow the control in the final months and have Fox News contributors be so intimidated they wouldn't dare put out any information that might hurt Hillary. And the last straw was when Sean Hannity, about a month ago, had Donald Trump on and allowed him to talk about Bill Clinton and rape, settling rape cases. And because of that, that's the big term that they banned Roger Stone off CNN, MSNBC, and Fox. He's been banned for six months. He didn't want to talk about that, but he was basically told. So that's unfolding as well. And now if you think Fox had already gotten bad and lost half its ratings in many demographics because it was becoming so globalist, it's a bellwether of the coup that's happening. And there's a breakdown here. Report Murdoch's son horrified by potential Trump presidency forced out Roger Ailes. And it lists a bunch of different articles from Slate, Fox, you name it, admitting that, yes, indeed, this is being done right now. This is all pre-planned. The lawsuit set up years ago, ready to bring down Ailes right before the election. And the next will be Matt Drudge and Alex Jones and everybody else. So this is how they do it. And the Roger Ailes things is completely synthetic. Um, look at look at the Clinton settling rape cases, covering it up, all the enabling, uh, all the lying, all of it. But that's okay. But for me, the issue is we have Debbie Washerman Schultz first saying she wouldn't be at the DNC yesterday because of the hacked emails coming up. That they were there, not the media is mainly focusing on the fact that they said, let's create a narrative that he's a bumbling idiot. He's a moron. He doesn't know how to run things. That's actually true about Bernie Sanders. I mean, it's a fact that God didn't have a paying job until he was 40. But she said, let's develop that. But deeper in the emails, it's come out in a few news articles, there's thousands of them. Deeper in the emails is that they were talking about having the superdelegates just block them and announcing a narrative that it didn't matter if he won, they were still going to win. Remember, they nakedly came out five, six months ago and said it doesn't matter if he wins New Hampshire. It doesn't matter all these states he wins. The superdelegates matter. <clears throat> we changed the rules. We're the sovereigns. They tried that with the Republicans. But to their credit, it failed. But now, they're going into this convention with the Queen Hillary's coronation. Crooked, robbing Hillary, who didn't even win California, but they, quote, met the day before with the AP and CNN, with the big donors and the superdelegates, and they decided what her numbers would be so they could then announce it the next day. The voting didn't even matter. And I can't believe there's not a bigger outrage by this, but... I'll say this, Sanders talks about a lot of real problems, deindustrialization, globalization, corrupt mega corporations being above the law, but that's not capitalism, that's globalism. But it's the problems he talks about are real. His solutions, look at Venezuela and everywhere else, they don't work. His solutions are what globalists actually want. They just want it done a little bit slower via Hillary. But talking to Hillary supporters, they are the most cultic, dumbed-down, mindless, stupid people we've ever seen. I got a hand to the Bernie Sanders people on average. They actually 
make some really good points and are smart. So I'll give them that. But it gets crazier. What else is in these emails? That they organized the anti-Trump demonstrations that were so violent in Chicago and every other areas. We knew that was Hillary. It, it was. It was. It was. Roger Stone and others that confirmed it was Hillary. It wasn't people in Bernie Sanders shirts beating up Trump supporters, attacking folks. It was Hillary operatives. That's in the emails as well. That's mainstream news that they scapegoated the Bernie people so the Democrats would see that and think, wow, beating up innocent folks, we're not for that, or people calling for communism, we're not for that, to make Hillary look less radical. So they played Sanders, just like the globalists always play socialist. They played democratic socialists, no such thing. They played him so hard, they're playing you now unless you wake up and vote for Trump. Here's the bigger question, though. What about election fraud? I mean, you know, if they'll steal the votes in at least 10 states and give it to Hillary Clinton, when, when Sanders in some cases was 25 points ahead, 20 points ahead, 14 points ahead, 11 points ahead, 10 points ahead, these are real states. He would he he won by a landslide. If they'll steal the nomination, will they try to steal the election? You bet your bottom buck, buckaroo. Look at these headlines. CNBC. Wasserman steps down ahead of DNC convention after blowback from WikiLeaks saga. Pressure mounts on Wasserman to resign. She did. Top DNC staffer apologizes for email on Sanders' religion. Oh, yeah, there's even anti-Semitic crap in there. Leaked emails show DNC officials, I told you they're Democrats, folks, planned anti-Trump protests, and they ran them and did them and had folks dressed up as Sanders. Boom, Daily Caller. Twitter, accused of suppressing DNC WikiLeaks story. Oh, think so? I mean, that's what we're talking about here. But when we come back, I've got a bunch of clips I'm going to play. First, Trump. Taking a line directly from this broadcast. We're going to be Americanism, Americana, not globalism. The mainstream media in hundreds of publications panicked Thursday night when they heard Donald Trump talk about, we're going to promote Americanism, not globalism. That will be our credo because they couldn't block it. When he gave speeches saying that in other parts of the country and similar things, they would just not cover it. Not Fox, not CNN, not anybody. Of course, the alternative new media that in many cases is bigger than the old dinosaur media, it did. In fact, Buckley just uh, was vacationing with his wife uh, in Europe. He just sent me a photo of the New York Times. I'm going to tweet out during the next break. A photo he took that was the New York Times, a full double-page spread. The T-shirts of the RNC. And there's nothing inflammatory. There's nothing political. There's no Hillary for prison. There's nothing. And they wonder why they have to be owned by the richest man in Mexico and why they're bankrupt. Why they're like a baseball card for some Mexican kingpin. Because they're a fraud. They're a birdcage liner. They're a joke. They're, their whole mystique is gone. When I was there, they're like, the New York Times wants to do a profile. The New York Times wants to interview. And I was just like, New York Times, one of them showed up. She's a nice lady and everything. But I was just like, I don't care to talk to you. Just make up whatever you want to make up. You don't want to talk to the New York Times? No, I don't want to go play basketball with uh, Kim Jong-un either. I mean, I just blow my brains out before that. I mean, I, I, I just, don't you get it? I don't want to be in the establishment. You've wrecked the greatest country on earth. You've bankrupted us. You've run us in the ground. Don't you understand? I don't want to be in your club. I want to trailblaze. I want to bring back liberty. I want to make America and the world great again. And that means exposing you because once you're exposed, you're gone. It's just so pathetic. They've hired all these nobodies, all these, these, these hunchbacked, intellectual, midget people that just think they're God and you're not God. Your whole world's coming to an end. Figure that out. But, of course, they're scapegoating Washerman Schultz, another bug-eyed demon, like she was the one trying to steal things from Sanders. But Hillary didn't. She didn't know. She's cut Washerman Schultz's head off politically. No honor among thieves. They steal it from the voter. They steal it from Sanders. They put that hyperbolic weasel, you know, up there on TV to resign as if everybody's going to go to sleep now because of this.
truly sickening. And they went out. I got to tell you, I don't roll my eyes a lot of what Stone says because everything he's ever told me turns out to be true. It's why they say he's the biggest liar ever and he's a hatchet man and he's a dirty trickster because none of it's true. None of it, from my experience. It's sickeningly accurate, the stuff he comes up with. Sickeningly accurate, the, the connections he gets us. And he was like, oh, they're all, you know, we have the intel. They're all Sanders people. It's all fake. They're directing it. Uh, the Justice Department, Obama and Hillary, uh, are directing the entire protest against Trump. You know, we know through the Chicago PD, they were ordered to stand down, on and on and on. And now it's in the emails. Boom. He's joining us coming up in about 25 minutes. But let me play this short clip of Trump Thursday night and Trump a few weeks before combined with his declaration of independence against the globalists. Here it is. The era of economic surrender will finally be over. We will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. There you go. And then there's another clip in that intro that I'm going to put in all our intros and I'm going to hammer forever where Trump says, we're going to play it coming up in the next segment, where he says in his speech uh, that was uh, Thursday night, Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. That is going to be just, you're going to hear that every hour on the show forever. I am going to hammer it because it is so key. Now, let's go ahead and go to another clip here. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this clip. Now, now folks, I, people have to understand something. When Mark Dice, who does reporting for us, puts out these famous videos that Drudge and everybody else links to, where he goes out, 90% of Californians, white, black, Hispanic, college degrees, you name it, 90%, 9 out of 10 every time. Sometimes it's 10 out of 10, but usually it's 9 out of, you know, it's one, sometimes it's 13 out of 14, but it's usually about 9 out of 10. Say, we want to put all gun owners in slave camps and kill them. Or we're going to take their guns and put them in slave camps. Or we want to, uh, you know, make everybody be slaves in a globalist commune. I mean, you know, the, they don't know what the 4th of July is. They don't know anything. They say, Let, let's make Karl Marx Hillary Clinton's VP. Oh, yes, it's great. If you say Hillary supports making Karl Marx her VP, they're the biggest fake intellectuals. They don't know what planet they're on. They just know they feel powerful. They're with the system, even as it gang rapes them. This is the first person, Rob Dew, today in Philadelphia at the DNC interview. And by the way, most of the people, this guy's about a nine or a 10 when it comes to being a, a, a zombie moron, but they're all six, sevens, or eights. I mean, this is, and so we're going to put out videos that are just, we don't usually even do this. We'll just put out videos like Mark Dice where it's like 15 people and 12 or 13 of them can't talk, okay? Remember the Obama phone lady? He gave us a phone, gonna do more. I mean, it's like the white, black, doesn't matter. It's like Muppets. And God bless them, they're human beings, but this is who they are. This is who their operatives are. And, they're, and he says, well, they stole it from Sanders. Says, That's fine. Whatever the government wants to do. These are soulless usk. Then a Sanders guy comes over. Oh, you got an agenda, InfoWars. We're like, really? We let him talk, and he goes, okay, I guess you don't. Yeah, no, we have an agenda to show what's going on. We wish that 10 out of 10 people were at least as smart as a Sanders supporter, but they're not. We're showing you what's going on. I just fire and forget, folks. I just cover, boom, the facts what my historical gut is, what we believe to be true. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but let me tell you, compared to dinosaur media, we are the opposite. Let's go ahead and go to uh, part of this clip. Here it is. Okay, so I'm here with a uh, Hillary supporter. He's got a, a, a shirt that says, Yes, Queen 2016. What's your name, sir? My name is Anthony Navani from Hammertown. I'm a Democratic leader. Greg Vitale sent me down a volunteer with the com uh, Committee of uh, Democrats for Hillary Rodham Clinton. And I support the Democrats because John F. Kennedy inspired me to become a Democratic leader. I trust Hillary. I trust Hillary for leadership, dedication, honor, trust, dignity, loyal, trustworthy. Hillary's the best. I know when she becomes president, she'll be the best leader in the world. Go Hillary. All right. Hey, did you see the article about the WikiLeaks documents that came out and said the DNC was trying to uh, throw it for Hillary? They did not want Bernie Sanders to become uh, the nominee for the Democratic Party. Well, I believe that the, 
Democratic Party. They know what they're doing. Hillary's a good leader. I trust Hillary. Hillary is a good leader. And I know when she becomes president of the United States, she'll be an outstanding leader for our country. I trust her. For, I trust her for loyalty, leadership, trust, value, friendship, and God and country. So you think it's okay that they decided to select a candidate instead of letting the people's will decide? Uh, yes, sir. I do agree with that. That they, the, the, the uh, government should allow Hillary Clinton to become president of the United States. All right. Uh, one last question. Um, what do you think about the emails uh, scandal when the FBI director came out and said she had at least 110 classified emails that she put out on her server? As far as I'm concerned, there she's clear. Hillary Clinton is cleared from all charges. All right. She is clear, 100% clear. What do you think of Bill Clinton? Awesome. I campaigned with Bill Clinton. I got him elected. I got him certified. I, I, I got him elected for president of the United States. This guy associates his personal power with Clinton. Best president we've ever had. So is Obama. Obama's totally awesome. We're going to miss that him. That is cult brainwashing. I'm going to miss him too. All right. What do you think the biggest things are in this country that need to be changed? What do I need to be, uh, be uh, things that need to be changed? Uh, basically, to keep everything remain the same. Everything has to be remain the same. Do you think everything's good right now? Yes, sir. Everything is awesome, outstanding. Collapse, going bankrupt, economy falling apart. And I agree with Hillary Clinton, 100% pure proof. All right. Will become the right. Next president Pause it right United. there. Then we have the next guy come over and accuse us of showing crazies. They just stole the election from Sanders. That's the cult accepting. I mean, we're just showing the facts. When a country, when a nation, when a people, when a planet start accepting tyranny, the bottom falls out of the floor. The bottomless pit. And all that we're seeing is the public start to wake up, not trust the system, and rediscover what made us great. Not globalism, not collectivism. But I tell you, you go out and you see what the Democrats are doing. You, you see BBC and CNN and others censoring the word Ali with the latest Islamic killer in Germany. Well, I, not the latest. I'm sorry, the shooting was Friday. Yesterday was a machete killing by an Afghan of a pregnant woman. I'm sorry. And they at least admitted he was Afghan. But now, Dems censor white from red, white, and blue. You can actually see at the sports stadium where they were having this media event for the DNC in Philadelphia where they covered it up and changed the color. Because you can't have a white section, a blue section, and a red section. And you think, well, this is overreaching. This is mental illness. You know, they don't want to trigger stuff. That's crazy. You know, ban brown paper bags, a mother, mother and father, you know, ban all these terms. No, folks, they want to be able to just ban language whenever they want. They're setting the precedent for that. There's a full video up on Infowars.com actually showing the blueprint of it. In fact, we could probably roll some of that while Joe Biggs is talking so TV viewers can see it. Infowars.com forward slash show. I'm 48 minutes into this broadcast and I haven't mentioned that we're going to be doing a 28-hour broadcast. It used to be 24, but now we've expanded it to 28-hour live broadcast. I'll be hosting for at least 10 hours, special guests, our crew on the ground in Philadelphia, and more. This is going to be a special report while Hillary's being coronated Wednesday through Thursday. A lot of stations, a lot of affiliates, <clears throat> a lot of UHF stations, VHF, cable, TV are picking it up. A lot of our affiliates are, but here's the issue. I normally promote one of these once a year events that we usually do at the middle of summer, end of summer, months out. I have been so incredibly busy battling the globalists, launching new projects, and having such amazing success on every front, quite frankly, that I've never even mentioned this now until today. But the video where I promo it and more is at Infowars.com. We're announcing Operation Sleeping Giant, Infowars launch special, 24-hour broadcast. I started, I started thinking, no, because we go 24 hours from 11 a.m. to the next 11, but then we always do the next four hours anyways. So it's really a 28-hour broadcast. And uh, we'll also have some of the biggest sales in our history as part of a fundraiser during that. Special auctions of Infowars gear. And more. So be sure and join us and spread that link to everyone you know.
because we're just three days out or less now from that being launched. Now, joining us is Joe Biggs. They've been there since yesterday. They follow a lot of amazing reports. Joe, when they openly admit, and it's not even a news item, that, oh, we're banning the color white, it might be offensive, that's discriminatory against the color white. But it's like if Scientology did something like that, they'd call it a mega cult. I mean, this is, or if Jim Jones did it, you'd laugh at it. I mean, this is the most cultic, freakazoid weirdness I've ever heard. And I can't believe it's not even a big deal, Joe. Or they won't say Ali now or Muhammad when the jihad is killing people. They say they're not Islamic. They yelled out Akbar, but they're not Muslims. And by the way, their name's, you know, Tom Jones. I mean, we've now reached that level. What do you think, Joe? Roger that. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com in downtown Philadelphia, where tomorrow the DNC will be kicking off. And last night we had this opportunity to go into the DNC media party that happened at the Phillies baseball stadium. And uh, do Michael and Kit and I actually walked up into one of the top uh, top decks where it was actually breezy to cool off. And a guy who worked there is a union worker. He was a fan, ran over and started telling me about, hey, man, he was like due to the backlash at the RNC, how there was a red elevator, a white elevator and a blue elevator. The people <laughs> were upset about the white elevator that the DNC <sighs> wanted to go ahead and squash that before it was a concern. And it's now the instead of the red, white and blue sections. It is now the red Ashburn and blue sections because we want to be <laughs> we don't want to offend anybody. Else. Now, what color is Ashburn? I have no idea. I, I maybe like a, a a communist with yellow, like I don't know, a red and yellow mixture. With it's a, just it's just there's a new level of just they're stealing all of our basic rights. We got video of this for TV viewers. They're stealing all of our rights, and then meanwhile they're trying to number one, white people aren't white. We're, we're I mean some are, but most of us look like pink geckos, which. Quite frankly, I like to be more tan, uh, so I guess I hate my whiteness, but whatever. The point is, I actually like tan people. I like dark people. I'm so racist. Excuse me. I find it very exotic, but that's because I'm a bad person. Uh, I mean, Joe, at a certain point, when you and I are out in the sun, we, 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 I mean, we're red. So I guess I got to ban the red, too. And I guess once we die, we turn blue. So I guess we got to ban the whole thing, Joe. Well, I think what they're going to do to go ahead and squash anyone's feelings from getting hurt at the actual DNC convention, there's going to be a red section, a triggly puff section where they're going to have a large picture of her with blue hair and a complete like a, a meme that's moving a gif of her shaking her arms and then a blue section as well so to help, you know, make everyone a little bit more comfortable. Let me ask you a question. I know Dude was shocked. He's got a bunch of interviews coming up. He said he found a lot of people as bizarre and cult-like as the guy we played earlier. Have you seen that video where he sounds like a Muppet and saying, I'm glad we stole the election from Bernie Sanders? That's a good thing. I haven't heard it yet. He was telling me about it. I was actually in another part of the march, and I actually had an opportunity to speak to like one of the only very few Hillary supporters that are out here protesting. There's very few, like a handful. You know, there are thousands, like you know, ten thousand people out here that were Bernie Sanders supporters marching up and down the road. But uh, you know, I, I encountered uh, Black Lives Matter today, which is you know, in Philly, it looks to be about eighty percent white. And uh, I really got into a conversation and triggered this one white guy. To a point to where he, he looked like Hillary Clinton's uh, seizure going. When I called him out on something yeah, with some facts. That's what's crazy you know, is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the, we would be in, in Pittsburgh and if they saw a Trump shirt, they would actually start going, eh, eh. I mean, they're mental patients. What? Where are these people from, Joe? Uh, their mother's basements. Most of them are still residing there, and they probably will retire in their mother's basements uh, with those Cheeto-stained fingers and look of uh, defeat and disgust. What's the, the, the overall thing. flavor, though? I mean, wh how would you describe the spirit of Philadelphia versus that of Pittsburgh? I mean, uh, versus that of uh, Cleveland? Well, inside of the convention center areas, you're going to have more of the delegates, more of the delegates who've rolled over, and they're more pro-Hillary. Now, in the streets, you're going to have thousands, tens of thousands of these uh, Bernie Sanders people who are hoping that Bernie will maybe uh, pull back that endorsement of Hillary and then hopefully step in in some way and take this convention for themselves because we already know due to the DNC leaks today that Debbie Wasserman Schultz will be stepping down at the end of the, the convention, but she is expected to also be speaking 
tomorrow to a lot of the delegates for about three to five minutes. So based on how that goes, I think there's going to be a lot of animosity. As I agree. Well. And that's the $64 trillion question everybody's asking. Will the Sanders people that are like 90 percent, I mean, Hillary didn't have any votes. He'd have 50,000. She'd have 500. I mean, literally, she'd have 1,000. He'd have 20,000. It's total fraud. They admit they stole it. Will these people like cult members march into the modern political gas chambers and see our free and open elections murdered in front of everybody's eyes, Joe? I know, I know those reports are coming tonight. Uh, what percentage of them uh, said that they'd be going along with this when you talk to them? Uh, most of the people are pretty angry, but if you look at this press pass, it actually has Debbie Wasserman Scholl's name on it. And so, like Cleveland or how we had to have 30 badges, we only get one here, but it's got her name on it. And as you can see, we're going to have to get a black magic marker and uh, take that off. So are you going to be going in? You're going to be going into the nest. You're going to be going into the nest. In fact, if you can get in there now, we'll talk to you in like 30 minutes during the Stone interview. I'd love to be inside the nest. Um, please continue, Joe. Oh, uh, yeah, there's nothing going on in there right now. This, there's not going to be anything happening until tomorrow. There was just a couple parties last night. But, uh, you know, we had an opportunity to speak to a lot of the protesters who are hoping that there's going to, that Bernie's going to break away into a third party and uh, hopefully run on his own and do something like that because they have enough people that are uh, Bernieites that are going to jump up and steal this election from Hillary Clinton. You know, inside this media center that we were at last night, you've got a lot of hardcore uh, Hillary fans that are in there. And I was wearing a... Uh, a pretty uh, provocative T-shirt, the Hitlery T-shirt that we're going to be uh, getting pretty soon, and uh, it was very interesting to see people look at me and discuss and go, "Why would you wear something like that? What has she ever done?" And I'm like, "Wow, how long do you have? She's done so much." My cab driver today, he was like, "He's like." All Trump does is lie. All he does is lie about everything. Hillary's the only proven person. I'm like, yes, yeah, she's the only proven criminal. Trump is a wild card. We have nothing. We have nothing on him. That's why the only thing they can ever use is racist, sexist, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, Trump is the one who invited Caitlyn Jenner in and said, you can pee in my bathroom. I don't care. But for some reason, he's against LGTB. Q, whatever it is now. It's all just part of the incredible brainwashing. Uh, stay there. Back in 70 seconds with the second hour for five more minutes with Joe Biggs. Then, Roger Stone, the consummate Trump insider, gives us the breakdown of the next level of the fight to restore the republic and make America great again. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. We are reclaiming the mantle of Americana. We are defending the republic. We are rekindling the spirit of 1776. New York Times publishes T-shirts from the RNC and leaves out Hillary for prison T-shirt. And they wonder why they're dying. That's my tweet at Real Alex Jones. By the way, that shirt is still available. It's the third edition. It's about to sell out. We'll have a fourth edition. Now, we are now carrying the Bill Clinton rape shirt as well. We're the people producing it, printing it, InfoWarsStore.com. This is what triggered sink young poopy pant turdly or whatever his name is. Uh, that shirt is available exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get in their face. Why not go all the way? Joe Biggs, uh, getting back to uh, final thoughts here, my friend. I'm going to get you on a bunch throughout the week, the whole crew that's there covering things. How epic was Cleveland, though? I mean, the, the airplanes in the sky. I know we've got airplanes there saying Hillary for prison. But uh, Cleveland was so epic. Uh, contrast the two places together. Well, the weather in Cleveland was a lot better. <laughs> For one, this is the hottest and like muggiest place I've been to in years. They were bitching on Fox this morning. That's like hell. They say it's so humid, and the the AC in Morgan. You you walk one one block, Alex, and you are completely drenched. It is miserable, but uh, it is what it is. We're going to be out here uh, doing what we do, kicking ass like we did in Cleveland. Like you said, Cleveland was epic. We got amazing interviews. We got in on key things. We were able to talk to a lot of people, stop some communists. We we're able to get in with the uh, the Young Turks and sit there and really just kind of show how the left is. That they're completely out of their mind a lot of times. The fact that you know. We're more worried or they're more worried about which bathroom to go into or what to what color to name a section of a stadium. Meanwhile, there's actual things going on. We have open borders. We have uh, the Second Amendment that's on the verge of being taken away if we get Hillary Clinton as left. This president, there's important topics we should be worried about, not transgendered bathrooms, not the color of the name of a section in a sports. Well, they got to give us little fake weird rights as they take all of our basic freedoms. What about just the general fact that I got to be honest, Democrats on average look like they've been lobotomized. I'm not being mean. No wonder they're always talking about how intellectual they are. These are really stupid people. 
I saw a girl that had one of the prettiest faces I'd ever seen, and then when I panned down, she looked like Sasquatch that had the half of her body from the waist down. I mean, it was very scary. Maybe, maybe, maybe space aliens are real. And these are actually hybrids. I'm joking. But, Joe, other key points you want to impart to the viewers from the DNC? Well, I think we should. Well, I think uh, Chink should change his name because I think that's a very offensive term used to uh, describe a certain type of people. And uh, we should also call him Triggly Turk from here on out. Triggly Turk. Listen, they just, they're so arrogant. They, they wave us over when we walk by. We had other stuff to do. I'm walking by. I could do 500 interviews if I wanted to. Everywhere we were mobbed, just cameras, uh, thousands of news articles, hundreds a day, all over national news, all these big interviews. And then I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll be back later. So, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah. Like freak out and spit in my face and threaten to attack me and then have our YouTube videos taken down and then say we're liars. What did you make of that? That was pretty shocking, the fact that they, within minutes, were able to, via YouTube possibly, take our videos down. Well, they were on the YouTube page. I mean, uh, I mean, they're, they're force-fed by YouTube. Go ahead. And, and, and meanwhile, what are they doing? They're doing a quick edit really quick to cut out the spitting, to cut out the uh, the fat-shaming part coming from the lady who's, you know, known for her. That's right. They edited it out where they call me an, a fat bitch. They also attack women. Yes. It was it was a uh, it was beautiful to see their true colors come out in that moment, and we were able to have that video. We put out our version. We need a meme of, of him as Trigley Turd. Uh, Trigley Turd. He's not Trigley Turk. It's Trigley Tur Turd. No, Trigley Puff or, or Trigley Turk. And we need to also say, hey, hey, you're such a big Muslim lady. Put the frickin' burqa on your head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it Talk about crazy. I'm looking at the BBC. The Associated Press, you name it, now banning the word terrorists or discussing it and pulling Islamic names from the daily German and French attacks with machetes, hatchets, guns, trucks, hundreds of dead, bombings. I saw some headlines when in Kabul, Afghanistan, 80-something got killed and they didn't say Islamic attack there. I was surprised they didn't say a German did that. I mean, separate Islam and, from the debate. It's the control of language. And then the Democrats have this sports stadium, this baseball stadium, with the red, white, and blue sections. And they get rid of the white section and call it another color. Because people freaked out on there being blue, red, and white elevators at another event. I mean, whoa. I'm wearing a white shirt, folks, with a blue blazer a navy blazer because it looks good. And if a seven foot tall NBA superstar wears a white shirt, he's not racist. I shouldn't even have to defend that. I mean, it is mental illness. It is mind control. It is culture war. Meanwhile, what we heard from Roger Stone uh, last week has now been confirmed. I also went over and talked to Fox News folks that were all bivouacked over at the Rich Carlton uh, there uh, at the uh, RNC. And I talked to several Fox News hosts off record, and they said, oh, yeah, no, we, we, we've been told. And, I, and I've been told this months ago, actually last year, too, that they've all been threatened with being fired. In fact, Sean Hannity's been told. That's why I've been suddenly been defending Sean Hannity, saying I respect him. He was told, you, have, you let Trump talk about Hillary and covering up for Bill Clinton's rapes and him settling cases, you're going to be fired. That's why he said he may leave Fox now. They threatened a bunch of people. They've had this lawsuit for a year sitting there, the sexual harassment suit, with a long list of women they dug up going back sometimes 40 years. I mean, they have stuff from the 70s before I was born. That, that Roger Ailes grabbed a woman's butt at a furniture store in 1971. I, I mean, this, uh, this is crazy to bring down Fox. A lot of folks go, you're going to get big now. They're all going to you. I don't want to get big at the expense of the fall of free press. Fox News has attacked me. They've already tried to control the conservative movement. The point is, is that they get Fox, they get everybody. So that's also uh, in the news today. It's come out with other mainstream media confirming what I have broken down here. Rupert Murdoch, Slate, Fox, uh, others report, son horrified by potential Trump presidency forced out ails because he wasn't attacking Trump enough. 
I mean, that whole thing with Megyn Kelly, the rest of it was a stage deal. You know, she's, she's going to be part of the suit now. She says, well, six years ago, that pays her millions a year. She was hugging him, and he squeezed her a little too hard. I mean, I've gotten to the point where women that aren't my wife or whatever, or I'm married, I'm, I mean, you, I'm not hugging you when you try to hug me. Nope. Don't be alone in a, in a room with a woman either. I mean, it is this, this culture is incredible. Meanwhile, Washerman Schultz has to resign because the emails come out that they stole the election. They had superdelegates. That's already known. Joining us for the balance of the hour is Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. His crew designed the new shirt. We're selling it. We're producing it. I hope it's the new mega shirt. We're still selling the Hillary for prison shirt that has become totally viral with hundreds of companies knocking it off. That's fine with me. We want the original, though. It's at InfoWarsStore.com that helps support the broadcast. The new Clinton rape shirt. Looks like the iconic, you know, Obama communist posterized shirt that said hope. Instead of scam or instead of jihad, as it should have said. Well, now it just says rape with Bill Clinton smiling. An original design from the Stone Zone, available exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. And we have uh, just printed up a ton of those, not even reviews of it, because we've only been selling it three days. But it has been printed right here in the USA. The 18-wheeler is coming to our studios, to our warehouse. We'll be shipping these babies out by Wednesday. She'll be the first to get the shirt that, 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 that triggered um, the Trigley Turk, the Trigley Turd. And I don't want to spend much time on them because we've got all this big news coming up. If you don't know about it, I'll tell you about it later at the bottom of the hour. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Media Row, hundreds of TV and radio stations all in there. Hey, come on in there. Oh, I'll come back later. I'll do my interview. But later, I jump on. They make a big deal that I took over their studio. Total crap. Everybody's seeing through it. But the big thing, the reason I'm going to only mention what happened with the Young Turks, videos all put in forwards.com from all the other angles of what really happened, them attacking me, hitting me, spitting on me, everything, is that there are people acting like they were with us, screaming and yelling, when it turns out it's their people working for them. And I got set up by them. Okay, I did. I think, though, they're handling Sink, or Chink, or however you pronounce his name, because he, he doesn't seem like to be the you know, knife in the drawer. But we're going to cover that later. The issue was Roger Stone was the one that we were going through doing interviews with. We could be there all day if we wanted. We'd just done like seven, eight, nine interviews. We'd only done four or five more left. We wanted to leave. We had a meeting to go to. It was very important. I'll leave it at that. Believe me, don't be hanging out with the Young Turks. They wanted to have this big pity party about how it was all about them and calling me a fat bitch when they talk about, you know, let's arrest people that call people fat. It was just all so hypocritical. And it all got caught on tape. But the biggest issue was they pulled three of our videos within 15 minutes of us happening live, and it was the videos of them, and then they put out edited versions covering up what they did. So the fact that they work for YouTube and Google is very scary, and so this affects everybody. But, but let's shift gears out of that for now. Roger Stone, I want to get into Washerman Schultz stepping down, the WikiLeaks, where Trump's going from here, his epic speeches against globalism. I mean, this is an incredible time to be alive, my friend. Yes, indeed. Uh, this was, uh, Alex, the best convention I've been to. As you know, I've been to every Republican National Convention since 1964. But this is the first one that wasn't run by the politicians. Uh, and uh, it's amazing how the talking points went out to the mainstream media. Because by the time I left the arena after Trump's momentous speech and got to my hotel, at least 13 reporters had told me that the speech was dark. Too dark. Oh, I watched Fox, CNN, all of them for an hour on the elliptical this morning. It was all the same talking point. Boring, a failure, fizzled. It was, everyone was bored inside. It was, a, I've never felt electricity like I felt in there, and everyone's talked about that. Only Hemmer at Fox admitted it was the most electricity he ever felt. Yeah, but I think what they're trying to say is that, that uh, the speech was not more upbeat, meaning Trump didn't say Islamic terrorism is not a problem. He didn't say that everything at the Veterans Administration healthcare system is wonderful. No, we're, we're in apocalyptic times. This country's up, hard up against it. Uh, these are dark times, and we face stark challenges, and Trump laid them out. So he didn't say it was morning in America, and that's why they're criticizing it. Meanwhile, the WikiLeaks of the Democratic National Committee uh, internal memos proved that the nomination was stolen for Hillary, Wasserman Schultz steps down and now goes immediately to the Hillary payroll. This is the payoff for uh, screwing Bernie Sanders in the progressive movement.
So, uh, you know, the epic cheating of the Clintons continues. What bothers me is that the alleged plagiarism of, Mon of a Melania Trump's speech received far more coverage than this. That's all they were talking about today. Right, but it, it receives more coverage than this startling revelation that the Democratic nomination was stolen for Hillary Clinton. It, the, the, the media, the mainstream media, has no sense of, of propriety or of, of, of order. They don't understand what's important. They're so busy putting out propaganda that they're missing the biggest. Well, they're mindless parrots. They're bird brains. They just repeat what they're told. You're absolutely right. I mean, for me, I feel guilty that I don't come up with words big enough to describe how crazy it is that we're all calmly taking the proven emails and the superdelegates making it up that elections don't count and stealing it from Sanders. As you said, it's incredible. She should be disqualified immediately. Meanwhile, they picked uh, Tim Kaine of Virginia, as I predicted. Uh, and Kane has a... You predicted that like six months ago, by the way, on my show. Yes, I did. Uh, it, the difference, the only difference between Tim Kane and, say, Ted Agnew uh, is the bribes that Agnew took were illegal under Maryland law, but the bribes that Kane took in the form of suits and tickets and other things are technically not illegal under Virginia law. He's got an ethical problem. He'll fit right onto the Clinton uh, uh, ticket because, as you know, the Clintons would steal a hot stone. That's right. Roger Stone, stay with us. The new Clinton rape shirt available at Infowars.com exclusively. Now, here's a clip of Donald Trump from the convention saying Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. That is total anti-New World Order. That is like high noon to a vampire. And then, of course, the clip of him a month ago saying that the era of American surrender on trade is over. Hillary Clinton's a communist spy of China. Notice that speech was not aired anywhere. But they can't block him when he gives a convention speech. That's why he's up so many points right now, way ahead of Hillary in so many polls. My big concern is stolen election. Here's their problem. Trump isn't going to roll over. Trump knows she's crooked Hillary. He knows they just stole it from Sanders. Americans know that just happened. If they miscalculate and steal this from Donald J. Trump, what do we do? Stone's got a plan to counter it. We're going to talk to him in a moment about that, but first the clip. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. We yeah. will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. The era of economic surrender will finally be over. Oh, my God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Trump's for real. I can just tell you 100%. So is Nigel Farage. Met with him privately. I'm just going to stop right there. Uh, none of this was even off record, but I'm just going to leave all this stuff off record. The point is, Trump is 100% for real, putting his life on the line. If you don't back him with the Democrat and Republican Party against him and all these foreign governments, and the Chinese communists and this corrupt communist pope, shame on you. And I'm going to tell you point blank. It's not about the money. We need money to operate, obviously, but... To see a third of the people on the street in Cleveland wearing Hillary for president shirts shook up the globalists. It was a huge story. I want to see in the few months before the election, because we've got the factories that can do it, everyone to be wearing Clinton rape shirts. Look at the New York Times. We can put the tweet up showing dozens and dozens of T-shirts and a two-page spread saying photos you know, of, 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 of T-shirts. New York Times publishes T-shirts from RNC and leaves out Hillary for president T-shirt. And they wonder why they're dying. They put all these milk toast things up. The New York Times is a shadow of itself. It's owned by a Mexican kingpin. It's it's bankrupt. Only the, the guy made billions off Obama phones. Then he sh shovels it back into this scam. He owns it like you know some head he's got mounted on the wall. The New York Times. What a joke. All right, I'm all over the map here, Stone. I want to get into the big question. I want to do it the next segments. So we have plenty of time. Let's, let, let, let's get into what do we do if they steal the election next segment. Right now, let's get back to the spin, the media, Washerman Schultz, the emails proving what you said, that they ran the, what you said, they ran the anti-Trump uh, protest, blamed it on Sanders. It's all there. They stole the election. They put the superdelegates in. This is so sensational. Yeah, it's extraordinary, Alex. I mean, uh, I'm very going to be very interested to see if the mainstream media, particularly uh, some of the cable networks, function uh, as a fact checker 
for the Trump campaign as they functioned as a fact checker for the Clinton campaign. I mean, it was extraordinary to see uh, at least two of the networks go through Trump's speech or speeches by others and say, well, this isn't true. Benghazi, she's not responsible for Benghazi. Everything's great at the Veterans Administration. Just absurdities. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see if the mainstream media plays the same role in Philadelphia as they did in Cleveland. Uh, but uh, I think we, we already know the answer. The Trump-Pence ticket uh, is an intrinsically stronger ticket. And for those who have, may have thought that Trump doesn't get it, I mean, his speech was a, an all-out call for nationalism, for American sovereignty. But it was also unity, like, hey, we're going to back off churches, you have free speech, we're not going to harass the gays anymore. And it was all so fair, it had everybody coming together. Talk about a unifier. My God, this guy's awesome. Well, actually, and it's interesting, that, that line where he said uh, that he would uh, protect the LGBTQ community, he then ad-libs a line that's not in the uh, prepared text in which he said, as a Republican, I'm very happy that that got all those applause, in essence. He said, thank you. He said, thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, look, Trump is the more tolerant candidate. Hillary will not protect uh, gay people, Hispanics, Asians, African Americans, all Americans from Islamic terrorism. She doesn't even admit that it exists. Uh, you and I both know they're burning churches in Egypt. They're burning Christians across the region. Uh, but, you know, we're more interested in covering... Since you raised this, I had to pinch myself. They've banned the, the, the white and the red, white, and blue of the Democratic event in the sections because white is evil and now all over the news including reuters they will not in an ap you name it they will not say the name ali bbc scrubs ali from munich killer's name as he screamed Allah akbar and, and, and as isis takes responsibility we've reached a new level where the bbc won't even say terrorism now what are they what is this stone I and mean, this is crazy well it's censorship you've been talking about for this time for this about this for some time the, the leftists and the establishment are hysterical about the rise of Trump. And therefore, we're now going to resort to censorship or smears. Uh, I have to mention the entire uh, uh, sequence of events with the young Turks. I mean, the young Turks, uh, particularly this fat Turk uh, sinkhole or whatever his name is. Let's be very clear. We did not crash their show. I would never do that. That's by the way, by the way, stay right there because I want to, I mean, I need to be able to roll the video of this and stuff. And I want to be able to walk through this for our listeners. They're like, what are we talking about? Why don't you set the table? Yeah, this is very simple. We were in the media center. You and I were doing several uh, radio interviews together. We had had a great interview with Jonathan Alter, who is a former Time reporter, now on Sirius, who's a real establishment figure, a liberal, very good guy, smart guy, just incorrect on a lot of things. But fair we had a spirited debate but and, and and we had people hundreds of booths begging us begging us to be in their deals but nobody was spitting on anybody then we're walking down the hallway and i, I hear a producer for the young turks ask you to come on the set a show you've been a guest on a number of times it would be good tv you go up on the set i'm kind of holding back kind of just off camera because i'm sensing maybe this is a setup and suddenly this fat Turk goes absolutely insane. Now, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, but this was a setup. They grab your microphone, then they demand that you leave. Yeah, they wouldn't let me leave. I said, well, let me have it and I'll leave. Then they start saying, we're going to hurt you and spitting on me. And then I went, whoa. Yeah, and by then they said, Stone, get off our stage. You're like 20 feet away going, what? Yeah, I wasn't on their stage, but the best part is the guy. Well, by stage, it's a, it's, it's a freaking hangar. You know, a huge building just everywhere, stets everywhere. And you're like, what? Yeah, the best part is, uh, is uh, Sank keeps yelling, you're a liar, Stone, you're a liar. Everything you've written is a lie. Everything you say is a lie. I say, what have I lied about? He says, Elliot Spitzer. Does he not read the news? What part is wrong? That Spitzer liked hookers or he liked to choke hookers? Uh, only a month ago, the New York Post and the Daily News reported that a woman in a New York hotel called the police because she said Elliot Spitzer tried to choke her by the way he's been convicted of all this hooker stuff it's in the newspaper what you said he says that's why you're discredited it's like roger stone said that abraham lincoln was a republican well, he's now, discredited technically he hasn't been uh, convicted that's exactly the point he was never no i meant for the earlier hooker
listening to the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us on stations across the country. We were getting into what happened at the RNC. I would have at speeches I was giving, the thousands of people, I would have comedians from Adult Swim charge the stage and start fights. I'd just bring them up. I would have, you know, Ann Coulter jump in on a show I was on. Didn't matter. And I'm like, hey, come on the show as I'm walking down through Media Row, a huge building next to the RNC event, just full of, I mean, I'm talking 300, 400 TV radio stations, more shows you could do all day. You could kill yourself in there. And I'm wandering by and some producer waves us over. I got to do some other interviews. So I do them. I come back by and then they're doing the show. I see they're on break. They're not talking. I'm, I'm, I'm a media guy. I see people sitting there not talking. I go, hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. And then they act kind of friendly, and as soon as they go live, the person, I believe, because they all look the same, it's all like the trendy guys that run it, same suit, same hairstyle, everything, goes, Alex Jones is taking over, Alex Jones, uh, and all of a sudden, I'm going to beat you up, and start spitting in my face and attacking me. And they start going, Roger Stone, you're not taking over, and Roger Stone's like 20 feet away, and Roger Stone goes, what are you talking about? So again, it's not about the young turds or the young triggly puffs or any of this. It's about their disinformation, how they were on the Google YouTube stage that admits they work with the White House, and how as soon as our live videos went up, they took them down in real time. As soon as we made a big deal about it, they put them back up. But I, I want to digress into if they steal the election. We've seen it st them steal it from Bernie Sanders. We're the, we're, will there be a big revolt against that? And so much more. But putting bookends on this, while you talk about it, we're going to roll some footage for TV viewers watching at Infowars.com forward slash show of what actually happened. Roger Stone. Yeah, look, uh, I don't want to belabor this, but to be very clear, uh, it's not that Elliot Spitzer was ever convicted. In fact, that's precisely the problem. Uh, he violated the Mann Act, taking a prostitute across eight state lines. Some liberals say, well, the Mann Act is never enforced. Actually, a New York State Supreme Court justice was convicted of to 15 years in jail for violating the Mann Act the exact same year that Spitzer did, only months before. He isn't convicted because he was wealthy and connected. If he were black and poor, he'd be in jail right now. As far as his both patronizing and choking hookers. One month ago, a prostitute called the police from a New York hotel and said that Elliot Spitzer had tried to choke her. The police showed up. He had already fled the scene of the crime. She had marks on her neck. Uh, they went looking for him. Then subsequently, she fled the country that very night back to Russia. Nobody to question, no crime. And last week it was announced that Spitzer is suing her presumably to get the payoff back. So I don't know what Senk is talking about. This guy is a, uh, is a criminal. He's just not convicted, but he's violated the law uh, to, of all things to yell at. He didn't tell me I was lying about LBJ, which of course I'm not, or about Donald Trump. Uh, so look, the guy doesn't know anything. I've watched him on TV. He's inarticulate. It's all rope name calling. You see, this is the classic tactic of the left. Stone, you're a liar. You're a liar. They don't want to refute the facts because the liberals can't. Okay, well, I'm just going from memory. I don't pay attention to a lot of New York politics. But, but, but listen, listen, listen. I had to fix it because you know how this is. The, the, uh, the, uh, the penny wastes at Media Matters for America would get their panties in a twist about, you know, these arcane subjects. So it was very... Sure, but I'm just going from memory, Roger. D didn't, d didn't he... I know he wasn't convicted for this, but didn't he get in trouble for this stuff before? He resigned as for governor over it. So he, but he, that's exactly the point. He should have been prosecuted, but he wasn't because he's a wire. Uh, the madams who provided hookers for him, they went to jail. So, anyway. Well, my big problem with him is, didn't he put a law in place to take the cars of John's while he was seeing hookers every day? Exactly. So the real issue. But listen, here. this is all a distraction. Why did he say you were on his stage, most of his radio, stop taking over, you're 20 feet away in a hallway, and, and then, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, there's so much bigger fish to fry, but it's just crazy. Well, the bigger news, of course, is the self-immolation of Ted Cruz. I mean, Ted Cruz has a golden opportunity, and he muffs it. 1964, Barry Goldwater was the nominee. Nelson Rockefeller took a powder, wouldn't endorse him. George Romney, Mitt's father, takes a powder, wouldn't endorse him. Governor William Scranton of Pennsylvania, he splits too. He won't endorse him. 
Richard Nixon sees only opportunity. He not only endorses Goldwater, he introduces him to the convention for his acceptance speech, and then he hits the road and campaigns for the Goldwater-Miller ticket in 38 states, more than Barry himself. Four years later, when Goldwater lost, and I don't expect Trump to lose, but to, fill out the, to uh, follow out the analogy, uh, Nelson Rockefeller is persona non grata. Non grata. Barry Goldwater, Bill Buckley, John Tower, Carl Curtis, the giants of the conservative movement, they're not for Ronald Reagan in 1968. They're for Richard Nixon because he was a party loyalist in the party's greatest battle. Ted Cruz could have been a hero here. Instead, he is so self-absorbed, he, so, uh, he is so obtuse about how he looks, he stabbed Donald Trump right in the back. It was one of the most duplicitous things I've ever seen in American politics. Let me be clear. The Hill reported on this. He's going to have a primary in Texas. We're going to find a candidate who is a, a true constitutionalist and not an egomaniac globalist who's taking million dollar plus illegal loans from Citibank and Goldman Sachs. Speaking of that, I want to come back and talk about what happens if they try to steal the election from Trump. You have a plan to counter it. But here's one of the senior congressmen from Texas, Congressman Carter, who I talked to at the airport flying out Friday. This is his views on Cruz not being a Texan. He should go back to Canada. Well, we were sitting here about to board our flight, and it's Congressman Carter from the great state of Texas. Sir, uh, you are actually a real card-carrying Texan, meaning you were actually from there. Uh, what is your view overall of uh, what Ted Cruz did? Oh, well, first and foremost, he calls himself a Texan. He doesn't keep his word. That, that's intolerable. Texans keep their word even if they're hurt, even if it hurts them, because that's who we are. It breaks my heart that he's a Texas senator and didn't keep his word. I heard it from a little bird that, that when he didn't keep his word, you had something to say. I got kind of went ballistic, but I've calmed down now. So should Ted Cruz maybe just go uh, be a congressman in, uh, in uh, Ottawa? Well, he's acting more like a Canadian than a Texan. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Do you have any comments? <laughs> All right, folks. That's uh, Infowars.com on the job. Infowars.com. By the way, you can read it in Politico. You can read it in The Hill. Myself and Roger Stone with a little Trump juice. We're coming after that fake Texan, okay? All hat, no cattle. And it's not about a vendetta against Cruz, but he and Beck are just such slime bags. Beck now goes on ABC News, CBS News, you name it, and says vote for Hillary. I mean, how in the hell could anybody put up with this? Yeah, look, Glenn Beck is unfortunately irrelevant. Uh, a more important point here, Alex, is that the, uh, the Republicans had a very successful convention, and Trump uh, really crystallized uh, the, the, uh, the stakes in this election. These reporters saying it's too dark. These are apocalyptic times. It call, you know, dark times call for dark rhetoric. We have dark choices, stark choices, I should say. So I feel very good. I think Trump will be a couple points ahead. Let's move to the most important point here. Yes, we're, we are going to have to be vigilant about voter fraud. Uh, I read a terrific study uh, by Richard Charnin, who's a math retired mathematician, a brilliant guy, a liberal, by the way. Stay there, stay there. I'm going to give it the floor when we come back. What is the final legs of the race? What are the dirty tricks? How do we counter fraud? They've stolen it from Sanders. Will the Sanders people try to stand up for the vote in America? Or are we bad to even say there was ever even voting? All right, Roger's got to jump out a cab and get over to a very important meeting. He's got to go in like five, six minutes. I want to give him the floor as best I can. Roger. Obviously, we know that the polls show Trump's ahead. I think this is going to be a boring fest that we're going to see with Hillary. Uh, a, do you think that uh, some of the Bernie folks will do the right thing for the voters' rights in this country? you think they'll be able to suppress that? And then let's shift gears into Trump winning and what they're going to try to do to steal it. Uh, well, how do we counter that? Well, let's take them one by one. Uh, one of the great disappointments here is that Bernie Sanders himself turns out to be a fraud. All this talk about progressive values and principles turns out to be nothing. He, he signed on to the Wall Street candidate. If I were a Sanders supporter, I would be furious twofold. One, he got cheated out of the nomination. We now know that definitively based on these WikiLeaks documents. Yeah, undoubted. That is so bombshell. 
And, and, but the media is too hung up on, Hill, on the alleged plagiarism by Melania Trump. And then second day... I've got to interrupt. How did you know when, the, when it first happened in Chicago, you said unequivocally these are Hillary operatives, this is White House run, not just Hillary. Now it's all come out that it was directed by the Democratic Party and they had people dressed up like Sanders. You, how did you know that? Uh, I have sources, Alex. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You just go ahead. Uh, I do want to tell you about a huge piece of news here. Uh, Malik uh, uh, Obama, Barack Obama's brother, has endorsed Donald Trump. That's right. Front page of the New York Post today. Blockbuster story. Malik was in New York last week uh, when I understand this decision was made. Uh, pardon me, let me make sure I have the right cover here. It might be and helpful. he says he absolutely loves Trump because of the corruption of Hillary and Obama not delivering for folks. It's a big deal to have Mr. Obama, uh, the brother of Obama, endorsing him. And ironically, Alex, uh, Bernie Sanders' brother, who lives in the U.K., said that Bill Clinton was a rapist. Oh, my goodness, that's what you're not allowed to say, even though it's entirely true. Even uh, though you're banned on all networks because of it. Well, what's ironic here, we, we went through this in our interview with Jonathan Alter. For some reason, the liberal media, the mainstream media, insists that because Hillary and Bill have denied his sex crimes, his assaults on multiple credible women, that means they're not true. In other words, Broderick, uh, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey, Paula Jones, all these women, they should not be believed because she's Hillary. This is nonsense across the board, just total nonsense. But Bill Clinton settled <laughs> cases with women that claimed rape. Yes, and I believe Juanita Broderick, and I can tell you this. There are going to be new women coming forward who have now surfaced, who have been emboldened by the very brave Juanita Broderick, who have read the stories about her deal, detailing Bill's serial assaults on her, her stalking of her, uh, and there are new credible women who will be coming forward wow. shortly. That's amazing. Uh now, obviously, we've talked privately. I don't know if we can talk about this, but what do we do if they try to steal the election? I mean, obviously, if there's a big enough landslide, they can't do it. Uh, obviously, Trump's not going to back down. He exposed crooked Hillary earlier. He exposed the Republicans trying to steal the nomination from him. That's why they failed. So Trump obviously has the instincts to beat him. How do you see this playing out? Because, I mean, right now, I see Trump winning. I think it's crucial that you begin to prepare the argument before the election. As I started to say, I, uh, I read this terrific study of the Wisconsin elections and primaries by Richard Charnin, who is a Democratic liberal, retired mathematician, brilliant guy, who concludes uh, indisputably that elections in that state have been stolen through the system. We're going to see this again, these machines that have no paper trail, these computerized machines. This is truly, truly problematic. How do we counter it? I mean, I don't put the cart before the horse, but if they if they steal it for, for Hillary, we know there's fraud. What do we do? Precisely why I have to leave this broadcast and go to a meeting. I mean, there will be a game plan. The good news is that I think we know this is going to happen. It's not like in 1960 when, when if you'll read my book uh, on LBJ, uh, the man who killed Kennedy, <laughs> the case against LBJ, I have a detailed analysis of both Chicago and Texas. I go through precinct by precinct where, for example, in one precinct, there are 385 people registered, and the vote was 695 for Kennedy and 13 for Nixon. Sure. I mean, it's all famously uh, documented. It's all admitted. But Nixon, but Nixon was caught totally by surprise. He didn't see it coming. We know what they're up to. There are lawyers and computer experts beginning to develop a strategy. Donald Trump is not going to take this uh, sitting down. Oh, I, absolutely. I know he's not. Uh, he not countenance voter fraud. No, that's, he's front and center on the radar. We know that. Very exciting that Trump is, is conscious and so smart. So in closing here, um, I mean, we already defeated the Republican establishment trying to spin it. That, oh, your votes don't count. We're the imperial uh, sovereigns, to quote George Will. That blew up in their face. Trump fought back, unlike Sanders. The popular vote counted. This is a referendum against tyranny in the establishment. Everybody for Sanders should vote for Trump. Uh, and it's very, very exciting to know that Trump's not going to put up with this. I think we're on the edge of the biggest event in American history since our founding. Uh, that's probably correct. And I also want to point out that Time magazine has a terrific piece about the Clinton rapture. Of course, they're poo-pooing it, not realizing that they're helping Infowars.com and... Uh, uh, and uh, the Stone Zone sell 
hopefully millions of shirts. So if you have the Hillary for prison t-shirt, you now must get the companion Bill Clinton rape shirt. We're showing, the, uh, the Time Magazine showing you in the rape shirt, now available. That was just a demo at InfoWarsStore.com where the folks are printing it, putting it out. And then notice the New York Times, though, did a whole spread on the T-shirts of the RNC but didn't show uh, any of the real shirts, my friend. I mean, this is, well, this is why they're going bankrupt. But they did show the shirt that has the cover of the Clinton's War on Women. So it's the first time the New York Times has acknowledged my book other than one article that said Donald Trump seems to be using it as a playbook. Thank you very much. Well, uh, obviously, we normally have you on once a week, but as the quickening happens, we got to have you on more and more, Roger. Uh, do, uh, last question. Do, what do you think, your gut, will the Bernie people, because we, uh, Dew was telling me, he's there on the ground, he says, like, there'll be 80 people for Sanders, one person for Hillary. He thinks there's going to be a rebellion or something. That's why they got rid of Schultz as a sacrificial lamb. Well, I thought about uh, going out there. I had my Che Guevara T-shirt, my beret, my dark glasses. I figured I would stop bathing a couple of days before the convention so I would fit in. But I have decided not to go because uh, the uh, mainstream media will make uh, something out of it. The, the, uh, the Bernie people are angry and they should be. Uh, and I hope that their protests are, uh, are adequate because this is thievery. This is wholesale theft of democracy. Let's leave it there. All now, right, sir. Get to your meeting, and we'll uh, talk to you in the next few days. StoneZone.com, InfoWarsStore.com for the new Clinton rape shirt. God bless you. Thank you, Alex. Folks, they can censor us. They can try to ignore us in mainstream media. But when you send a video link or an article, when we get more traffic than the New York Times many days, when Drudge gets more traffic than the New York Times, Facebook combined every day, when you go out a third of the people, no exaggeration, on the street are wearing Hillary for prison shirts. When that's going on, it shakes the system to its core. And they can try to censor Bill Clinton's sexual abuse and all the things he did. He makes Bill Cosby look like a choir boy. Uh, you know, he makes uh, Roger Ailes look like an angel. Uh, he makes, uh, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer look like a cupcake. This is how you fight him, is you personally wearing T-shirts, you personally setting up YouTube sites or calling on talk radio or running for office or... Not complying with all this tyranny or all the leftist threats, don't show up or we'll kill you. I mean, believe me, it went on. No, we, we, we showed up. And the left didn't even really show up. Because they're not the left. They're a bunch of criminals run by the Democratic Party that's run by Saudi Arabia and the Communist Chinese. Are the Republicans perfect? Absolutely not. They're the horrible establishment that works for Democrats. We've just run them over, too. But I can tell you, folks, Donald Trump is the real deal. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. Am I perfect? Are you perfect? No. He's a real deal. So to everybody that early on has been back in Trump, your instincts were right. Your, your discernment was right. Uh, there's still a lot of cult-like evangelicals and people. And I'm a Christian. I, I love evangelicals. I went to evangelical churches growing up as a kid, that and Baptist. But, man, he's not the Messiah. I know they got you to invoke that, admit you followed false prophets of Glenn Beck uh, and uh, Ted Cruz. I mean, it's just it's cult-like. They're telling you vote for Hillary. It's evil. It's evil. And a so-called deal's been made if they sabotage Trump that these two, he could even be, the plan is, I was told, is, is Beck's going to be his vice president. <laughs> you'll, you'll never get that from the globalist, you idiot. You've been, you've been absolutely scammed. By the way, I hear in Philadelphia, this show's being broadcast on a pirate station since Hillary tried to censor our airplanes and billboards, 92.9 in Philly. I just hope folks don't spread the word about that. It's, it's only on for the duration of that. We're going to have a crew on covering it all, 20 Eight-hour broadcast kicks off this Wednesday, 11 a.m. to the next day when the show ends at 3 p.m., so 28 hours long. But I'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central for the four-hour broadcast, Infowars.com, forward slash show or affiliates and TV stations across the station, across the nation. I keep forgetting we're on TV. We're on a bunch of stations and a bunch of radio stations pick up the nightly news as well. Never saw that coming. Great job with the crew. We'll be back tomorrow. Lord willing, pray for us and support us.